Hi guys, Sifu Adelik here, Master Instructor at Kung Fu at Home and Niagara Kung Fu Academy. And I want to talk to you today about flexibility. Flexibility is something very important for your training. You do want to make sure that as you're learning different techniques that you increase your flexibility so it can uh, help you balance better, help you kick up higher as well. But a lot of times, um, people take that a little bit too far. And you see this in styles that tend to be a little more fl uh, flamboyant, like sport karate styles or, or contemporary wushu styles, where that flexibility, um, the, the cinematic type of flexibility comes in. And, and if that's what you're going for, if you want to look really great at you're doing your form and you're looking to compete um, on a f you know, based, based on form, that's something you want. But uh, in a more traditional sense where you're looking at uh, self-defense application and you know and longevity and keeping your body in good shape flexibility um, you know hyper flexibility might not be the a good answer for you right so keep that in mind before you go for that goal that that's something that you actually want see in, in traditional kung fu longevity is very important right you want to be able to train today so you can train tomorrow and if you're going for too much flexibility um, a lot of times you're you're kind of robbing uh, your health in, in the future, right? Um, a good amount of flexibility would be, say, to kick up, you know, um, your, your head, your head height would be a, a more than enough flexibility because in, in realistically in self-defense, you're not gonna kick someone, um, you know, head height, but you might kick chest height, and if you train head height, then chest height is gonna be uh, easy for you, right? But kicking above your, your head, might not be that practical. And the problem with that is when you're working on a full split kick all the time, um, although it looks awesome, it's not always the best thing for you long term. See, the, hip, the way the hip is, a ball and socket joint like that, right? And, and there's you know, cartilage in there that cushions it and moves around. Um, you know, and, and when, you're, when your hip is not um, too loose, you know, it does a good job of keeping it, keeping it snug. When you're working on flexibility all the time and you're working on the split all the time, the nice thing is that hip can, can kind of stretch right, right out of, that, right out of that, uh, that pocket like that, right? And, and there's not as much tension on it. But the problem then is if, if you have that hyper flexibility and then you do some kind of repetitive movement like say running for example, when you're running and putting impact on that joint and it's not as, as tight as it was, well then you have a lot of room in here and you have a lot of friction. Now over time, um, over a long period of time, that friction is going to have a wearing effect on that joint, and that's when you have that that cartilage wear out, right? Now, this happens sometimes in, in just naturally, and in, in for people that um, you know that carry themselves a certain way, but. If you're if you're you know constantly working on the split stretching that out, it's going to happen even more so if you're going to some kind of repetitive movement like like jogging. So, too much flexibility on that joint isn't isn't great, right? Um, long term. And if you look at that, if you don't believe me, look at long term. Um, a lot of martial artists that that train uh, a lot of flexibility in their old age, a lot of them have to get their hips replaced because of that, right? Because of that mix of hyper flexibility and then also a lot of friction in that joint because that that tension wasn't there that it once was. So you do, um, having a, the tension in that hip, not too much, but a balance of tension is a good thing too. So it's all about balancing out what you want, right? Realize that if you go too much toward performance, you, um, you know, visual performance, you, you tend to rob uh, yourself a little bit in the future uh, health-wise too. I mean, if you don't mind getting a new hip, a new hip that's cool, <laughs> no, no problem. But if you're looking at sustaining yourself long-term, um, just keep that in mind, right? You want a healthy amount of flexibility, be able to kick up to your head, um, you don't uh, necessarily have to do the splits. That's not, not the mark of a good martial artist. Just keep that in mind. Just keep in mind that you want to keep your training in line with your goals and your values and, and uh, keep training towards towards what you want. Decide on what you want out of your training. Make sure all of the drills and everything you do are congruent to that, right? Um, as far as keeping the body healthy for a long period of time, there's a certain set of warm-up you can do uh, that we do in our classes every day um, because a lot of times, when it comes to injury, it's not too much activity, right? And it's not a lack of activity, it's a lack of moderation. So we do, you know, too little activity all day, um, and then we come home into training, and then we push ourselves too far too fast. So you wanna make sure that you use a, a good warm up every day before you get into your training to keep that moderation. Um, there's a good warm up we do in our training every day, and I can send it to you if you'd like, just opt into the bottom of this uh, 
below the video there and I'll send you our basic warmer that we do that's that's good to uh, keep the body in good shape and I'll send you some other courses as well that way you'll always have them in your email and if you forget it later you can go back and search for it and find it easy enough okay uh, so hit the subscribe button on here if you want more good information from us and I'll talk to you soon thanks